I am Nick Shell. Yeah, the guy that wrote this book that you can buy on Amazon. There'll be a link right here. No pressure. I actually make more money in my ad revenue from these videos. But writing a book has allowed me to learn a lot about Enneagram and understand it a lot better than most people. What I want to talk about this video specifically is something I learned after writing the book. And that is there are absolutely predictable patterns as far as dating and marriage, as far as who's going to successfully match. Now, I want to be very clear. I'm not saying that you need to date or marry a certain number because anybody can get along with anybody. But what I'm telling you is I've from afar, I've looked at patterns and I've seen that for people who have been in relationship for years, in a healthy relationship and they've remained in that, there are undeniably some patterns. And to my knowledge, no one's ever talked about this before. I'm the first person in human hi history to make this connection. And that's what you're in tune for, for this video. So here, here, here we go. Here's the pattern that I've seen. People are attracted in a healthy way to people who have somebody in their path on, on the Enneagram chart. So I'm gonna give you an example. I'll give you plenty of examples. That's all this video has is be examples. I'm Enneagram nine wing eight, and I'm married to a Enneagram three wing four. So let's just unpack that because it's a pretty common pairing. My wife and I have been married for 16 years. So why does that work? Why did it? Why did it work to begin with? Why was she attracted to me and I was attracted to her? Beyond you know, beyond physical appearance or beyond. Uh, good conversation. How did, what was the science behind that? What were the instinctual attractions? Well, and I've, I've had this conversation with her. So I am Enneagram nine. My default is to be chill, is to keep things stable and calm. Everything's going to be okay. We'll make it okay. We'll figure out a way. That's the general demeanor of Enneagram nine. Well, my wife is Enneagram three and she's an achiever. She's I hate to say it, but like a lot of Enneagram threes, especially wing four, workaholic, like Tom Cruise, for example. Even Adam Sandler is a three wing four. Most of his shtick, it, he pretends to be an Enneagram six, like he's insecure, but he actually knows good and well what he's doing. So there are these people who are workaholic, they want to perfect their craft. It's all about their career and finding their identity through that. So they're always working. They're always focused on producing something. And even if it's not actual work, it's, it's an event, putting things together having plans, always doing something. So you can understand that a three naturally is going to be attracted to a nine because I'm all about chilling out and not doing stuff all the time. I'm, I'm all about being productive. Cause again, I'm, I got the eight wing and it's my dominant wing. I want to get things done, but like not all the time. Like for example, right now that it's a Saturday morning as I'm shooting this and my wife, she said, I need a weekend where we're just not doing anything. I said, okay, this weekend, and what is she doing? She's out with our daughter, like getting her nails done. Good, at least it's relaxing, but it's not like being productive and that, that's good. But she needs me and she always has needed me to help her remember it's okay to just chill out. And in fact, that's what we need to do. We need to chill out as often as we can. We work and we rest. So that's that attraction there with the, with the three. And I will say too, there are other ways where I'm just not inspired to do certain things, but her ambition as a three to get the project done is what drives it. I mean, we moved to Alabama this year and we had to gut this house and completely remodel this house. No part of me wanted anything to do with that, but I got in there and I did that. And my wife led the ambition to get that done. I would have been okay just buying the house and not putting all the money in renovations, but she's right. We should have invested in the renovations and that, you know, it's a better investment anyway. Uh, it's a 30 year old house. So I can see how that works. Another combination too, speaking of, of this, is a six and a nine. So my sister is a six, her brother, or my brother-in-law, her husband is a, is a nine. That's interesting that she married someone with that same Enneagram as her, as her older brother. But a six, whereas they're more anxious and worried about all the things that go wrong and trying to troubleshoot that in their mind all the time, you can imagine a six very well could benefit from a nine because a nine again, okay, we'll figure it out, it'll be okay. So you can understand that someone who's really ambitious and wanting to get things done all the time is attracted to someone who's pretty chill and someone who's worried about what can go wrong all the time is pretty attracted to someone who's chill. 
but vice versa. Why would I attract to my wife? Again, she's got this ambition. She's motivated. I love that. I, I truly do. Like that inspires me. And in the opposite sex, okay, yeah, I'm attracted to that. Uh, and I guess if you're not attracted to a six, you could think, well, man, they're worried all the time. I can, I can take care of them. Like I can make sure that they don't have to worry as much. Like I could see how that would work in an attraction way. But as a nine, at my best, I am an ambitious three. That's what a healthy version of a nine. At my worst, I become, oh no, the sky's falling six. But it's the fact that I instinctually understand that from my own path. And I think that's a lot of it. In the same way that my wife at her worst becomes me a nine. So we, we're in each other's paths. Now, I think this is a perfect example, but we can do this with any number. We can see that, okay, well, let's just, let me just find another number at random. So I can kind of show you this path. Okay, let's go, my parents, for example, they've been married since 1977, okay? My dad is an eight. He's a quiet eight, but he's, a, he's an eight wing nine. And my mom is a two wing one. So eight and two are opposites, but you know, a two at their worst becomes an eight, and an eight at their two at their best becomes a two. Okay, see they're, they're in each other's paths like that. So anytime we've got a number that's in each other's growth or stress, stress path, we're gonna find someone who instinctually understands that person, whether it's through their best or worst, they instinctually have the, have the roadmap in their brain that already works that way. Now, similarly, in addition to people being in each other's growth or stress path, I've all seen, so I've seen plenty of people who marry the number right next to them. And that totally makes sense. So for example, it would totally make sense Let's say that you're an Enneagram seven. I gotta have fun and excitement all the time. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. You may find yourself married to someone who is a six because a six is looking for what can go wrong and if we're having fun all the time. And if you are a seven, you have a six wing, even if it's not your dominant. And if you're a six, you have a seven wing. So that overlap of the wing totally helps provide a better balance. Another one I found too, there's plenty of examples of, of same numbers. Uh, Enneagram nines, I, I, I've seen this happen a lot, where an Enneagram nine wing eight is married to an Enneagram nine wing one. Now granted, I can give you fictional uh, examples. I can, Jim and Pam in the office, Jim Halpert is a nine wing eight. He definitely has an assertive side that Pam does not. Uh, and that's a good match. Homer and Marge Simpson, are granted, they're, they're examples of kind of an unhealthy uh, personalities because Homer, He's full into the whole sloth mode on the Enneagram 9. He's sitting on the couch, drinking beer, eating donuts, ignoring his kids. Even when he's at work, he's falling asleep. And then Marge, she's also a 9, but she's totally just like repressing the anger all the time. And then she's like OCD about cleaning, you know, but they're both 9s. And so whatever your number is, you may find that you're very attracted to your same number. You instinctively understand that person. And the chances are they probably have the opposite wing than you. But these are patterns that I've seen. I've, I've even noticed this in movies when, when the couple's numbers don't match up to one of the patterns I just named, they tend to not work out in the end. I've, I've noticed that. And a lot of times when they do work out in the end, their numbers do match. I mean, I've really studied this and I've seen the pattern. So here's, here's my theory. And again, to my understanding, I'm the first person on the planet in human history to ever make this connection. That it appears there's a pattern in hindsight of people who stay together in a healthy relationship, they're either married to somebody in their stress or growth path and vice versa for that person by default, or they're married to someone right next to them, like a one and a nine or a three and a four, or they're married to someone who's the same number as them, but a different wing. That's been my observation. I'll say this again. I said at the beginning, what I'm not saying is that if, if your relationship pattern doesn't match what I, said, then you shouldn't stay together. I am not saying that at all, because I think any healthy number can be married to any healthy number. I totally believe that. And there's plenty of examples of that. But as far as a clear pattern of what really seems to be most recurring in healthy relationships, it's of the patterns that I mentioned. Now, if you're not in a relationship, but you're dating or, or looking to be dating and like that, you may find that if you can get to the point where you understand that person's an agram and you know yours, you may find that it's a little bit, it's more effortless if the numbers do it. You may find that. 
I'm not saying that you should only be in a relationship because of the patterns, but I'm saying the, the patterns do exist in hindsight, and I can see this, and I think that's fascinating. I'd love to know your thoughts right here.